face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome back to another episode of Course of Who Was Really Better. And this time we're looking upon the two bulky Saki type from Generation 4 and 7, the Crossman versus, of course, Cresselia. Now, Necrossman and Cresselia are very much alike in the ways that they're both definition of a bulky psychic type with, of course, 600 base stat total. The same amount of base stat total as, of course, the likes of Dragonite, Salem, and Stranitar. They are, by definition, semi-legendary due to this. But, as stated, our bulky, bulky psychic type, Cresselia for the longest time has been defined as the bulkiest psychic type in the game melee because of course it makes defenses with of course recovery and it actually took them three generations to do a similar concept again in of course necrosma and the question is whether or not this concept was redone in a way that actually tried to Cresselia or if Cresselia still should be overarching the bulkiest psychic type so with all this said let's of course see who is really better so the first thing we're going to go over is of course the typing psychic soul psychic type it is, by definition, one of the worst typings in the game defensively. It resists, of course, its own typing and fighting, but our way to bug Dark and Ghost. So it's not the most desirable, of course, um, typing combination, and therefore, Psychic type in general are usually stronger when it's combined with something else, of course, and the gates, of course, the bug Dark and Ghost combination, which are severely lacking, of course, its resistance is off. Other than that, there actually are a very, very clear indication of the, of course, base stats. Since the base stat total are, of course, exactly the same, it is the spiking that actually are the difference here. If you look, of course, their HP, Necrozma has a very, very big HP stat of 97, which, of course, is rival of 120 from, of course, Cresselia. Attack stat, this is definitely what Necrozma does kind of strive a little bit more, where, of course, 107 towards, of course, just 70 against Cresselia. Defensively, 101 versus 120, yeah, Cresselia is definitely bulkier. Special attack, 127 on the crossman, very big spike, versus, of course, 75 on Cresselia. So, yeah, here we have it again, more spiking towards, of course, Necrozma. Then, specialty defense, 130 from Cresselia versus, of course, 89 on the crossma. So, it's a very, very strong indication that, of course, Cresselia is even bulkier in this stat, too. As, of course, because the speeds here they are really, really close to one another, but of course, Cresselia is slightly faster, of course, 85 versus 79 on Necrozma. So it's very clear here that Necrozma is naturally more offensively capable than, of course, Cresselia, just by definition of its stats alone, 107 and 125. But Cresselia does have the more reliable spiking in its defensive capabilities, as, of course, it's 120 in both HP and defense, and, of course, 130 in its special defense, and being slightly speedier, which definitely could be helpful for this kind of bulky Pokemon. It should be said, though, that as, of course, since it's a soul psychic type, this bulk might not actually help it all that much as it looks like. And, of course, with that said, we're going to look at their, of course, abilities. And this, of course, is what defines their bulkiness in general. Starting off with Necrozma, it has, of course, the likes of Prism Armor. Prism Armor reduced by 25% of super effective hits towards, of course, the Pokemon itself. That means that Bug, Dark, and Ghost type damage are reduced by 25%. Which is definitely a very strong, of course, ability, considering, of course, as stated, Psychic type is not that bulky from the first place. So if they're bulky, they need to be somewhere capable of actually dealing with his weaknesses. And the Prism Armor ability definitely helps with just that. Cresselia, on the other hand, do not solve these weaknesses as, of course, the Necrozma is doing. But it do does get Levitate. And Levitate solves a few other things with it. Of course, immunity to ground types move, which is definitely credible. Definitely need another kind of resistance to its, of course, the resistant base. But the main pro here is, of course, that due to its being a bulkier Pokemon, usually they are very, very weak to status in general. And being able to not be affected by spikes and toxic spikes is definitely a big pro for this type of Pokemon. But one could say definitely between abilities that both are really, really helpful, making sure that these Pokemon stay healthier for a longer time. But this, of course, means very little to, of course, their move pool, because you can be as defensive or offensive as you like, but you're nothing more than your move pool allows you to be. And these two Pokemon just have a very, very reliable move pool, which are really, really uh, fairly strong. So we're gonna start off with, of course, what they share, and then, of course, talk about what differentiates between them. So they share a few defensive responses, which definitely are very, very good things on these. They both get recovery and, of course, the Moonlight. They also get Thunder Wave, Toxic, of course. And then we have the likes of Trick Room. Other than that, they also have, of course, their main stab in Psychic and Psyshock, 
making these Pokemon fairly reliable when it comes to Corsair stab output. And as stated, their defensive responses are definitely on par with one another, though it's very clear that one does this fairly better than the other. But what does differentiate them is of course what sets them apart, and this of course is their move pool outside of that, offensively and defensively. And of course we're gonna start off with Necrozma. Necrozma is an offensively very very scary beast. You just get a lot of moves which make it really really reliable. As I, of course, as I mentioned before, the Calm Mind, it also gets the likes of Sword Stance, making it able to, of course, fret things offensively. It also gets Iron Defense and Stealth Rocks, and of course, the Tournamites and Rock Polish. So it's very, very capable, of course, switching it up and becoming an offensive fret, a speed of fret, or really whatever. It also gets the likes of Stall Power, if you want to utilize that, with, of course, this already broad setup move. It also gets a unique move in Prismatic Laser, which is a psychic based Hyper Beam. Maybe not sound too scary at first, but trust me, 160 base power, that gets scary kind of fast. Outside of that, as stated, it does get a broad variety in its offensive move pool. It learns the likes of Rock Blast, Power Gem, and gem. we have Solar Beam, Earthquake, Brick Break, Air Lace, Rock Tomb, Stone Edge, of course, Brutal Swing, if you want to capitalize on that, Flash Cannon, Dark Pulse, and of course, Accessor. So the variety here is, def is definitely off the roof. It does actually lack something to hit, of course, any kind of steel type would of course like a focus blast. It does lack that, which is really unfortunate considering of course the typing it represents. But other than that, this is a very very strong Pokemon that are definitely able to deal with of course the bug and ghost weaknesses towards it and dark to some extent. But other than that, it does has a very very strong offensive move pool and is a very very capable threat in any tier really. Cresselia, on the other hand, has it just as broad of a move pool, if not even bigger, but more tutored towards defensively responses, but also a few offensive threats move, which is definitely are worth mentioning. First of all, we have, of course, the likes of Future Sight. Future Sight is, of course, a very, very strong move, definitely for a more defensively capable Pokemon. It also gets the likes of Psycho Shift, which, of course, pose any kind of status towards another Pokemon. Such, of course, being burned, you can actually um, transfer that burn to your opposing Pokemon. Other than that, we also get Lunar Dance. Lunar Dance, of course, works like Heal and Wish. Uh, you actually sacrifice yourself for, of course, full recover an already active Pokemon, which is definitely one of the strongest moves it gets. Since, of course, it does kind of hinder that, of course, that Pokemon could come back at it and just keep on going. Other than that, Offensive Move does learn, which are very, very important towards it. Of course, the likes of Moon Blast, Ice Beam, Solar Beam, Shadow Ball. And, of course, we get the likes of Icy Wind, a very, very interesting combination of move. It also can enjoy the likes of Signal Beam and Skill Squad when I transpire of that, and a Recycle if you want to have a Figure Berry combination, and, of course, a combination with, of course, the likes of Endure and Mud Slap. The reason I want to mention Mud Slap is because due to the C-move combination, Mud Slap is now, of course, a 100 base attack if you want to capitalize on that, and trust me, that's fairly strong for a Pokemon that lack any ground type move coverage, since of course the Light of Necrozma did get of course Earthquake, so I thought it was very, very necessary to definitely mention. I also forget that these two Pokemon just get a lot of dual screens, which definitely helped them both out to be of course very, very supportive, and as a standalone here, just going over their move pool and stats, it's very clear that they are teetered to of course being defensively most of the time. It's very clear that Necrozma has the luxury of actually being offensive, and due to his move pool, can be extremely scary straight on at it. But Cresselia does not have the same kind of option, it does hinder it somewhat. Cresselia is definitely not an offensive threat, hell, I'll even go so far, and it's not scary offensively, but it's pretty darn hard to kill. Because the Crossman is generally not that scary as offensive threat as it is scary as a defensive threat, because due off the prison armor, the Crossman can try him really, really naturally. And due to his already high stat, you know, its offensive stats, it's pretty darn hard to deal with. In a league competition, these two feel, of course, dealing with similar role, but Necrozma can actually kind of pivot more naturally because of the offensive natural capability it does have. So it all boils down to is definitely going to be whether or not the Prism Armor is enough to justify the already extreme defenses of Cresselia, and whether or not Cresselia's, of course, a low attack is enough to make it well unreliable to use in a competitive place because of Necrozma's already natural high attack. And yeah, after of course thinking about it and juggling back and forth, I'm going to say this. Prism Armor is a very very big deal for three situations where you can hit a field with super effective damage. Cresselia is not reliant 
on its ability to of course reduce damage, it doesn't have that and that's a major flaw with that Pokemon. But the flaw of this Pokemon is reduced by its defensive capabilities and of course being levitating means that you're immune to of course being switching in and out, making sure that you're not willed down as fast. One Necrozma has a lag of Stealth Rocks and make it a superb Pokemon due to it. Griselia is just that much more defensively reliable and due to lack of Calm Mind and of course having the likes of Moonblast and a more effective move pool than the Crossma have and of course a very, very more reliable special move pool, I will give this victory to Cresselia. And it has a lot to do with Cresselia's natural defensive capabilities. While I would say that of course Necrozma overall due to Prism Armor is definitely an upgraded Cresselia in many aspects, it doesn't solve its main flaw and that is every other matchup that isn't hitting you super effectively. Cresselia does deal with this much much more stronger and more defiant than of course Necrozma ever could done at this meta as it is. It should also be stated that due to course of transfer move, Cresselia does have an edge in a smarter move pool at the moment and Necrozma definitely need to get a race in that, it doesn't have that till this moment. And while I will say that offensively Necrozma is definitely the better between these two, it is whether or not it is offensively enough to in the long runs combine this combination with its defensive. And I don't think it does that, I think it's definitely hindered by it. I definitely feel that it needs to be more defensively involved to be able to deal with, of course, the physical approach that it is actually is forced to be doing. With that said though, Necrozma is still one of those Pokemon that definitely in one generation can change everything. I think if we get a transfer move going on, Necrozma may very well be better than Cresselia. But as it is right now, Cresselia is much much more reliable defensively and that defensive capabilities are enough to mitigate, in my own opinion, of course, the better between these two. It is the bulkier psychic type, even with of course Prism Armor, Cresselia naturally due to its already high defensive capability stats has to be considered a better between these two. So with that said guys, what do you guys think? I mean this is a matchup where I think it all boils down to personal preferences at the end, and as I said before in the league concept, they're both very very strong psychic types, they're definitely one of the best in the game and there is no doubt about that really. I'll probably go so far and say I think Necrozmite is definitely the stronger one in lead you because it is that versatile, it can be so specific and this is something that Cresselia does lack. But defensively, it's it's just up there. It's definitely one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the game and for a reason it's super annoying to be dealing with and it has to be, well, given a win sometime with, due to that capabilities alone. But yeah, I really want to hear what you guys think and other than that, Next week is going to be, of course, our 30th episode, and that's going to be, of course, a bit of celebrated with a guest host, which I know you guys already know very, very, very well. And uh, yeah, thank you, of course, as always, so much for watching, and enjoy next episode where we are going to watch, of course, these guys.